as we wind up this interregnum between the two votes, we understand that it's very likely that Kevin McCarthy is going to try to push ahead. Uh, talk about how many how many of these votes that can happen. I think the record was 133. That's right. Uh, we, we, we are now, the answer to this question is for the moment, no. We are now in territory we haven't been in in 100 years. Let's just show you. This is the history here. These are 14 times before now. This is now the 15th time that a vote for House Speaker has not been settled on the first ballot and will now go to a second ballot. And yes, the record was set in 1855. Nathaniel Prentice Banks of Massachusetts was elected Speaker of the House on the 133rd ballot. So when McCarthy says he's willing to go for the record of number of votes, that would be the record 133. The other thing to keep in mind here, the last time this happened at all, the last time we went to a second ballot, you got to go back right here. 100 years ago, 1923, Frederick Gillette, Massachusetts, it took nine ballots. That's the last time it was not settled on the first ballot. And as you're talking about, again, to the extent that this is a precedent, uh, 100 years ago, what happened, what you're talking about happening now is what happened then. Gillette was a Republican. Uh, the the uh, rebels, the renegades in his party back then were actually from the left. They were progressive Republicans. They withheld their votes from him on that first ballot. And he and his allies immediately moved to a second ballot. Didn't get it on the second ballot. They went to a third, didn't get it, went to a fourth, didn't get it. That took them until late in the day. And at that point, they made a motion to adjourn. And they finished up for the day. They tried again the next day. They failed a few more times. It took three days. And it took nine ballots, but the last time we were in this territory, uh, Gillette did end up winning. He granted enough concessions to those progressive Republicans to win. So the strategy back then certainly was what you're talking about now. Don't adjourn. This is what McCarthy people are talking about. Don't adjourn. Try to keep this going. Try to wear down these Republicans uh, who did not uh, vote for him on the first ballot. But again, looking at that. You know, looking at the map, we did see all 212 Democrats vote for Jeffries. There were no renegade Democrats who voted present or cast a symbolic vote for someone else. All 212 were there. All 212 voted. So, you know, that happening again here, the number of defections, this could be another, you know, 218 magic number on the second ballot for McCarthy. And I, just looking at who defected, you know, the, the key thing that jumps out at me is the ones, the Republicans who voted for Andy Biggs because Biggs was the other person to put his name in nomination for speaker. He opposed McCarthy when the Republican conference had a vote on who it was going to nominate for speaker a few months ago. He opposed him then, got a couple dozen votes, and he put his name in nomination, had his name put in nomination before this vote on the floor today. And there were 10 Republicans who actually voted for Biggs. The rest of the defections from McCarthy, it was sort of a mishmash. Some were voting for Jim Jordan. So there were other names. One voted for Lee Zeldin, who's not even in the House anymore, but the 10 who were willing to vote for Andy Biggs, who has been sort of made himself sort of the voice in the face of hardline opposition to McCarthy, does that indicate an intransigence on their part that might be a little bit more well-established than with the other nine? And it, 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 10, if he continues to have 10 defections, McCarthy just can't get the votes. He's going to have to get Biggs voters to his side, or at least voting present.